will carry it aloft. This satellite's electric eyes will scan the Earth's cloud cover, broadcasting data never before attainable. The weather station's batteries will last only two weeks, but it will usher in a new era of global weather forecasting. A scientific triumph for the new civilian space agency, the launching is a vindication for the sleek three-stage Vanguard space vehicle. One of the most technically sophisticated of the space rockets, the misfortune-plagued Vanguard six times failed in widely publicized launching attempts, only once placed a three-pound baby moon in orbit. But on this day, the Vanguard outdoes her designer's hopes. She soars aloft to join four other satellites still orbiting the Earth, three American, one Russian. Defense Department films show the perfect flight, mathematically flawless all the way, that carries the weather satellite into an orbit even farther out than hoped for, assuring a lifespan of decades, perhaps centuries, for America's eye in space. Avalanche, the terror of every Alpine villager. It takes on a grim new form in the shadow of Nadelhorn Mountain, where a rock and ice mass of nearly half a million tons lies poised, waiting only a prolonged thaw to hurtle down irresistibly and crush the Swiss village of Erbriggen. The hamlet is doomed. Only the exact moment of its destruction is uncertain. Already it has become a ghost town, abandoned by all but a few. The rumble of the grinding mass is heard incessantly sounding the death knell of Erbriggen, as half frozen it inches along, gouging a scar into the mountainside. The first big thaw will free the huge mass of rock to thunder into the valley and bury the hamlet. There is no hope. Those who have stayed behind keep a death watch. British reserve is somewhat strained by an odd apparition on the streets of London, and puzzle stares continue even after the explanation leaks out. It's a smog mask, carrying a few cubic feet of pure, salubrious air for its wearer to breathe, complete with a candle power defroster. A bit cumbersome, murmur the skeptical, but some people persist in trying to do something about the weather. If you can't change it, shut it out, which is the general idea behind this space helmet type gadget. As for being impractical, not at all, say its advocates. It's ingeniously adapted for the wearer's convenience. All the social amenities may be observed. And sustenance can be taken in. A gal could even fit a new chapeau under that dome. Something new in the way of water skiing contests. Enthusiasts of the fast-paced aquatic sport have done just about everything possible afloat, so now they're taking to the air. The general idea is that the one who stays up the longest is the champ. A sense of balance, a good pair of biceps, and man, you're flying. Looks like fun, too. Getting up is not so hard, staying up is easy. It's landing. In conventional flying, they try for a three-point landing. But in this sport, it's two points. Both skis, that is. Or you got trouble. See? Pretty sloppy. New York's Golden Gloves finals with the event's biggest crowd in nine years at Madison Square Garden, some 15,000 cheering on the up-and-coming amateurs. That's Lloyd Weeks, who is going to down Mike Cruz in the 126-pound open class. Cruz's game, but the ref says no more, and Mike seems to agree. One forty-seven pound sub novices now with Tom Gallagher and Dennis Kelly mixing it up. Kelly is having his ups and downs tonight. He's up, he's down, and he's up. A little woozy, maybe. Back for more, and down again. And Gallagher packs the punch. Highlight part of the evening, all proceeds as usual, went to the News Welfare Association. And here's Gallagher, a little groggy himself, but the winner.
Sam Moretz, the climax of the World Bobsled Championships, the four-man title race, fastest, most hazardous of them all. Franz Schnell pilots the German sled down the mile-long chute at mile-a-minute speed to take third place in the final standings. Italy next, champions led by Sergio Zardini. They go into the hairpins of sheer ice at a daring pace. Sensational speed in the final run. Only a blazing performance can beat the Italians. America's team is led by a 43-year-old Boston physicist, Dr. Art Tyler. With him, Gary Sheffield, Lake Placid, Parker Voorhees, Long Island, and Tom Butler, a Marine lieutenant. They're under terrific pressure. A hair's breadth miscalculation will defeat them, but they make a superb run. in one quarter of a second ahead of Italy to bring America its first four-man title in eight years. The new champs, Tyler and company.